Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess with So Many Creations. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite go-to last minute project. Are you one of those people that buys these for the holidays? I know I am, and it's totally fine. But as makers, we always like to do a little something extra. We don't wanna just give someone this, you know, cardboard gift card holder or those little tins that you can buy at the grocery store. We wanna make something. But who has time right now? It's almost December. I mean, I don't know when you're watching this video, but I can tell you tomorrow's December 1st. And I don't have time to go and make a whole lot of big things. I don't have time to wait for shipping, and I don't even have all the supplies I need at home. But I do for something like this. This is what I'm gonna show you how to make in today's video. It literally requires two pieces of scrap cork, or leather, vinyl, or anything else you have that's non-fraying. These are raw edges, totally fine. You don't have to finish them. You can if you have a little bit more time, but I personally do not. So I'm gonna show you how to make the simplest little card holder that you can make. I use this in my purse. I put my business cards in it, so I always have them nearby. I made this one for my husband. I may have borrowed it for this video. Out of his business colors, you can make it out of any color that you want, and literally, you just need some scraps. So I'm gonna go grab some scraps from the scrap bin, and I'm gonna show you how to finish this in probably under 10 minutes. I'm back. I grabbed all my supplies, super quick, really short supply list. So here we go. You're going to need two pieces of cork. I grabbed some seashells and some polka dots. I would suggest using something non-directional. The way that you're going to finish this, it's kind of gonna be folded in half. So if the yellow, for instance, was directional, it would be upright here and upside down on this side. So I would suggest using something non-directional. Something like this is totally fine. If you had a tree or a house or something that has an actual top, it would be upside down on one side and we don't really want that. So two three by seven pieces of cork or anything non-fraying. You're also gonna want a coffee mug. Why? I'll show you in just a minute. This is my favorite coffee mug. Halloween's my favorite holiday. I also have a marking tool. This is just a chalk pencil, a pair of scissors. I have my clips, always have tons of those around. And I'm using my Janome Skyline S9 today. So I have my absolute favorite foot, which is the G foot. It's the blind hem foot. It's the foot that has that little guide in the middle. I call this my top stitching foot. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna show you how I use that today. All of the stitching on this, the little top stitching here, as well as the sides, is an eighth of an inch. So grab your supplies, come back and join me, and we're gonna make this super quick and easy project. If you like videos like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click the little subscribe button, and you can also hit the notification bell. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do before we head to the sewing machine, because it is that quick, is I'm just going to use my coffee mug, that's why I brought it here, and I'm going to use my pencil to mark this little curve right here. I don't bother to make a template for this just because it's such a simple um, thing to do, and I already have a lot of coffee mugs. So I'm just gonna mark on the back here on the black part because I have a chalk pencil. You can also just use a regular pen and mark on whichever one you want. I'm just going to mark one, and then I'm going to use that one to mark the other one. That way I don't have to keep fussing with this. So I'm just putting my coffee mug right on top and what i try to do is not go all the way to the edge you can see like there's a little straight part right here it's just the way that i like it you can go all the way to the corner if you want but i'm probably leaving about a quarter of an inch or so i don't find that this needs to be the most precise thing it's just a little something extra to help you when you get your cards out all right so i did my mark right there and now i'm just going to use my scissors and I'm gonna cut that little part right out. You can use your rotary cutter if you prefer, but my scissors are right here, so that's what I'm gonna use. And that looks pretty good to me, looks even. So now I'm going to take this to the other one, and what I like to do is put them right on top of each other, wrong sides together, because that's how I'm gonna sew them and I think it's just a little bit easier to have it all set up and ready to sew. I have also used glue, or you could use some tape if you want to hold these together. I have my clips for today. I got these new fun rainbow clips. So I'm gonna use some of these. Just clip that together. And I'll mark this, but I'm probably just gonna cut right against here. 
and go ahead and do a little bit of trimming. I'm all trimmed and ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is just top stitch right along this curved edge using my um, blind hem foot. And I know I've shown this in other videos, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you again how I use this. So this is the G foot. You can see that there is a guide in the middle. I'm gonna move my needle position all the way to the left. I'm going to increase my stitch length. I always go to about a three, 3.5 for top stitching. And I'm just gonna run this right along that edge, just like that. My needle will be right in that little hole. And once I do my top stitching, then I'm ready to close up the sides. So I'm gonna go over and do that real quick. I did my little bit of top stitching right here on that curved edge. I used my blind hem foot. I did forget to mention what size thread and needle I'm using. This is cotton thread. It is a 40 weight. I use that for the top and the bobbin. And I am using a 9014 Microtex needle. That's my favorite size needle for cork. So I have my pieces done. I did decide that the seashells will be the outside. So those will be my yellow and the purple dots here will be the black. So in this case, for the top stitching, I didn't change my bobbin, I just have a beige here because no one's gonna see that, it's back here. When I'm ready to fold this, which is my next step, you are going to see the bobbin thread on the back here. So you can either go ahead and change that. I would, could match my pink right here, or I'm just gonna leave it because the beige will look fine on the seashells. Just wanted to mention that before you went any further. So now this super simple project is almost done, believe it or not. So I'm going to fold my pieces like this, and I don't fold that curve all the way up to the top. My measurement is about three and three quarter inches. That's what this one is finished. You can also, when you fold it, if you want, you can just kind of tuck a card in there and just check and make sure that's the height that you want it. You can adjust this a little bit if you need to, but I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is just move my clips so it's folded in half. That one is fine, I've got an extra now. And just like that, now I'm ready to finish up my sewing. I'm gonna start down here, stitch all the way up to the top, across here and back down, make sure I backstitch, and that's it. And I'm all done with my little gift card holder. I even put my gift card in here. I love giving two for one gifts. This can be reused for business cards, other gift cards, cash, whatever the recipient wants to use it for. It was such a fun little project and I'm gonna make a whole bunch more because everybody gets gift cards around the holiday season, right? I keep these in my purse and I like to organize my gift cards as well as my business cards. I even carry some of my husband's cards around. They're so quick and easy and I just had to grab from the scrap pile. So as you can see, I did not change my bobbin. I do have beige on the back here and I have this purpley pink on the front and I'm totally fine with that. This is also a great way to use up all those leftover bobbins with those fun colors that you needed for another project. If you have an embroidery machine, you could add a monogram here or a special message, whatever you would like. You can always add to this if you want to. The edges here are a great place to practice edge coating or edge finishing if that's something you like to do. For me, I'm gonna keep it nice and easy and I'm gonna skip all the extras and just make this out of my cork scraps. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, click the little subscribe button and the notification bell, and I will see you again.